Well, um, I'm Marilyn Corsianos, and I'm Walter De Cassaretti. And uh, we are we were invited to talk about our book, Violence Against Women and Pornography. Um, really, there hasn't been a lot of research in the area of violence against women and pornography, particularly by criminologists. So we really wanted to put together a book that was both theoretically and empirically informed. We wanted to provide insight on violence against women, particularly, particularly looking at the uh, mainstream of violence against women in today's contemporary heterosexual pornography. And um, clearly it's become incre increasingly more violent. Um, the genre known commonly as gonzo has pretty much dominated the mass market. Um, and we wanted to explore A, the availability of this type of pornography today, uh, which by the way is big business. Mm -hmm. It's a multi-billion dollar business. Um, look at the real world social consequences to violent pornography, violence against women in pornography. And of course talk a little bit about the lack of law enforcement in this area. And I can certainly talk yeah, a little bit more about that later. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we were really concerned uh, and worried, not only as scholars, but as parents and as members of our community about the proliferation of violent and racist pornography. And we were concerned about the conspicuous absence, as Marilyn said, of criminological work on this area. In fact, we're among a very small group of scholars, regardless of what discipline you're talking about, who are focusing on pornography and its violent effects, especially on women. So what we tried to do was synthesize the literature that's out there and, and try to present it in a highly intelligible fashion so that people from different walks of life can have what we like to refer to as kind of this go-to book that can give them um, the information they need to educate uh, themselves as well as students, perhaps children and so on. The other thing we wanted to do was answer the question, what is to be done about pornography and violence against women? Uh, it's a daunting task to challenge the uh, porn industry. It's a huge industry, as Marilyn said, multi-billion dollar industry. The combined revenues, well, the profits of pornography <laughs> are much higher than the combined revenues of Microsoft, Netflix, Yahoo, and so on, and uh, how, do, how do you challenge this? And so we provide some progressive short-term solutions. Uh, the approach that we offer is multi-pronged, um, oh, some practical grassroots strategies that people can use. And so it's a, it's a comprehensive book, um, again, deals with theory, research, and policy. And we've also looked at the lack of enforcement in the area, particularly at the federal level and also at the local and state level. If you look at the NIBRS statistics, um, over five and a half million crimes in 2013 were reported by police agencies. The category pornography obscenity constitutes only about 0.13% of the total crime reported. And at the federal level, there have been only a handful of prosecutions, obscenity of prosecutions, over the last decade. Certainly, if you listen to people like the LAPD officer who works in the pornography unit, who's been involved in many of these obscenity cases over the last two decades, he would argue that it has been this quote-unquote hiatus in the area of law enforcement that has contributed to this extreme violent form of pornography that has become uh, common in uh, today's heterosexual pornography.